if Fred Frampton got it, he knows he's fighting. You know he's fighting that. He's fighting um, Anthony and, Joshua. Yeah. yeah. So man, tell big, me, big match. it's a big match. Mm. What's your take on it? So my first take on that is uh, actually like it's a little bit different to what I think most people would expect. But my first take on that is actually the financial side. Okay. So Joshua actually put the same request forward as uh, Fury, which was that he considers himself the A side and therefore he wants 50 million to Francis Ngannou's 20 million as a payday. Wow. Now, my question to you is, do you think that Joshua is the A-side of that fight or do you think uh, Ngannou is the A-side of that fight? Because, you know, how many people can come into professional boxing, have their first match against the argu arguably greatest of all time at the time, arguably win and then go on to move forward? And so if, if I was to look at it, maybe I'm a bit biased because coming from MMA, but it looks to me like, it looks to me like Ngannou's the A-side. You know, I know and Joshua's yeah. got more experience, but uh, uh, certainly not in a 50-20 split. And 50-20 split seems madness That sounds outrageous. In terms yeah. of who's actually drawing the eyeballs, in terms of who's got a better story and all the rest of it. So, yeah, my take on that initially was a little bit of shock to see that if you've got 70 million going to the fighters, that it's actually 50 to Joshua and 20 to Ngannou, yeah. So what, from a 70 million split, that's what, circa 30% Ngannou, 70% Joshua, right? Yeah. I guess Anthony Joshua probably saying that because he's look, let's look at your numbers. Let's look at what you did against Tyson Fury. And he said, well, look, I'm not being funny, but the numbers aren't great. That's probably where he's coming from. Do I think that's actual reality? No, I definitely don't. I think that if we're being objective, and if you speak to boxing fans, I feel they'll tell you that, oh, well, in God is, he fluked it. He's, he's not a real boxer. He should be fucking, mate, he arguably just beat the best ever. Like, I don't care what the, the scorecards say. Like, the people know the truth of what happened in that fight. <laughs> the people know what actually You're happened. You're gonna go to your fight. grave on that one. I, I, will, I will die on that hill, for sure. But the, so the people know what happened there, right? So I feel like it is a really compelling fight. And I don't like this about boxing. It's like, well, who's got the biggest star power and all the splits and stuff. I'd say that, to be honest with you, Anthony Joshua should be really thankful that he's fighting Ghana because yeah. I feel it's his yeah. pathway back either to the top. Because he, he's, he's fallen, unfortunately, on a little bit hard times. It feels like some of the fans have fallen out a little bit to Joshua. He needs to prove himself against a high perception monster. Mm -hmm. And that monster is Francis Ngannou. So when it comes to the pay split, I mean, let's put it this way, right? Ngannou's getting way more than he would have done in the UFC, that's for sure. So he's already winning. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see him get a bit more money. I, I, I don't think, fit, if, I were, if I had all the cards, I'd say, do you know what? Based on the numbers, I would give more to Ngannou for sure. And I, I, I think financially should be even a little bit more equal. Let me just prove a point here because, and you're going to show me up massively if this falls flat, but uh, I can't remember. So Joshua just had a fight, right? Yeah. I can't remember who it is he fought. I couldn't tell can you. Can you tell me the I name of his opponent? I couldn't tell No, I know he won, but like, I can't tell you who he fought, right? And that gives you a, a clue how this guy who's at the very top of the sport, you know, but I can tell you who Tyson Fury just fought, and I can tell you who Ngannou just fought. <laughs> That's you know? right. Yeah. These guys are, are the names, and it really seems like at the very top, you know, there isn't a there isn't a whole lot of like mainstream recognition, but damn, does the re mainstream recognition come from Ngannou? And if you are Joshua fighting Ngannou, you are just bringing a whole fan base. Yeah. And that fan base is charged because they believe that Ngannou won, and they believe that he was just a robbery from the judges' perspectives. So now what they want to do is tune in. Can he make lightning strike twice? And is he going to get what he deserves in terms of if he wins? Does he get the recognition? I think that's a really good point. And I feel that, you know, Anthony Joshua needs this fight. I feel he needs to win. Yeah, it's like, I guess I would describe myself as I love boxing. I started off boxing. But, you know, I, I guess you might call me somewhat casual. But I, I, I know the top five, six guys. Beyond that, I don't really know. A lot of people know who Ngano is. Box, pure boxers, purists know who McGregor is. Mm -hmm. They know who Ngano is. Maybe they know who John Jones is. Like, Ngano just is that popular. This fight's got a little bit of a question. It's like, was it a once in a lifetime performance? Or is he actually just that good? Because let's be honest, most people thought he was gonna be haymaking, he was gonna be trying to find quirky angles. He was incredibly technical. I can what he said, he was super technical, special from South Pole, that straight left down the barrel. You know, and that was his first ever boxing fight. I mean, you know, you've been under the big lights, you know how like there's the mental aspect of it. You know, I feel that can Anthony Joshua study, study his tape? Yes, he can, but I think we're gonna get a completely different Francis Ngannou in that fight. I feel like he's going to improve technically. I mean, his performance blew people away. He was that technical. I think it's, I hope he's not underestimating it. I think it's going to be an incredibly difficult fight for Joshua. Anyway, that you look at it. Do you have a prediction? Um, prediction, okay. <laughs> I, I think 
I feel if if Francis Ngannou can hit Anthony Joshua like he did on Fury, I would say that he would win. I think Francis Ngannou is an incredibly cerebral fighter, um, and I would probably go, based on their last few performances, I would say 65-35 Ngannou, most likely by knockout, most likely within six to eight rounds. Okay, amazingly. Really interesting because Ngannou is open as the underdog, and I am going to agree with that. I think uh, if you watch that original fight between Ngannou and Fury, I think Fury underestimated Ngannou. I don't think Joshua will make the same mistake. I don't think Joshua is going to come to try and knock him out. And I think he's mm. going to be probably just able to manifest that extra boxing experience that he's had throughout his entire life. You know, in my opinion, I think it's probably actually going to be Unless Ngannou comes out to make it a fun fight, I think it could potentially be a bit of a boring fight. And uh, Anthony Joshua's got an incredible straight. He really does. It's a very, very good weapon for him. He's finished a lot of fights with that. But, um, you know, in the previous fight, Fury did a lot of work to try and lean on Ngannou as he does all of his opponents. And it didn't really work because Ngannou did a great job of mitigating that strategy. I think Joshua will look at that. I don't think Joshua's going to lean on him quite so much. And I think he's going to probably make it a little bit more of an actual boxing match. But I also think if I was in Joshua's corner, I'd be telling him, steal the rounds, steal the rounds, steal the rounds. And if the knockout comes, great. But the decision is ours, no matter how you look at it. Do you know I, I, mean? I, th I think you're right. I disagree with one thing you said, but I think you're right in terms of, if I'm Mr. Brooks and Anthony Joshua, as, a, as an armchair boxer, I guess, like, yep, yep. I would say make the fight as boring as possible. Limit any opportunity. Stick behind your jab. Keep it technical. Control all the exchanges. Do not overexert yourself and keep it very boring because the more you clinch with Ngannou, the more you try to open up with really flowery combinations, you're just asking for chaos. Yeah. Fury did engage with it. Now, here's the other thing, right? Like Tyson Fury did hit Ngannou. Like if anything, Josh was given his opportunity, and this is why I say it's 65-35. I, I think he's got a bit of an opportunity. But the thing is like, it's a bit about, do you want to be a really safe fighter that wins or do you kind of want to create those spectacular moments? So part of me, you know, the, 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 <laughs> I want to see him bring some fireworks to the yeah. table and get a bit aggressive and say, not only am I going to beat Francis Ngannou, I'm going to knock him into oblivion. I'm going to do it in three rounds. Because when he was on the up and like every win he had was a KO and for Joshua, it was like, my God, this guy's like unstoppable. Yeah, he looks the part. We want that energy. We want that energy to come back into the fight. A little bit of, you know, charisma and enthusiasm. And obviously he's incredible, but I think it brings that energy to the fight. It's going to be very exciting. Though.